combat the £3.5 billion per year cost of asylum seekers, a new report is urging Brits to house these immigrants in our spare rooms. Forget the fact that most voters don't want them in our country in the first place. This report by the Policy Exchange think tank and backed by former Tory party chairman Brandon Lewis urges us to invite undocumented, unvetted men into our homes. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Now, I'll tell you what. Why did the Refugees Welcome Brigade go first? You know, bleeding hearts like Sadiq Khan, Labour's Home Secretary Yvette Cooper, Liberal Democrat leader Ed Davey, all the holier-than-thou Nicola Sturgeon, Jeremy Corbyn, Diane Abbott, Care for Calais staff, no? What about the Archbishop of Wokery, Justin Welby? Any room at your end? No, thought not. Old Gary Lineker could squeeze a football team of them into his £4.5 million Surrey mansion. And not just heavily vetted poster boys like Rashid here, who stayed at Chateau Big Ears for a mere 20-day PR stunt. Of course, this... This won't ever happen, because these refugee-welcome hypocrites are the nimbies. No illegals in my backyard. And it's not just the MPs and the lovers. On Saturday, GB News reported from a protest in Portland against the barge set to house 500 men in the town's port. And guess what? The refugees welcome anti-racists didn't even want the barge in their town because of the strain 500 men would place on the local health service. You couldn't make it up. And look how these refugee welcome protesters responded when a reporter asked them if they'd house an immigrant in their spare room. On a list saying you're willing to take the refugees into your home? Because of course not. Uh, the only problem is I rent. You rent? Yeah. Well, if I had any space, I if would. If you had not, sorry, I can't. You can't, I can't take one. I, can't. I don't have, I don't have, I don't, don't have, I don't have a space. don't have the space. I, I, uh, rental thing, sorry, okay, okay. Rental, yeah, yeah. You can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Someone else's job. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, I can't, because my house is only a little small and... Uh, yes, if I had room. No, thank you. No, thank you. Any reason you no. I don't, what sort of refugee are you talking about? Uh, no, like Lineker and Co, these holier-than-thou hypocrites would rather dump tens of thousands of immigrants on the working classes who voted for stricter border control in every national election since 2010. But it gets worse. Just yesterday, after local objections were completely and utterly ignored, the government announced that the first 50 of 1,700 military-aged men are to be dumped on Wethersfield Air Base in Essex. Asylum seekers will be welcomed in Arabic and Farsi. They'll enjoy freshly painted rooms, three square meals a day, on-site medical care, a gym, sports hall, multi-faith prayer rooms, and a free shuttle bus into nearby Braintree and Colchester. And sites like this will crop up all over the UK, and you will fit the bill. Remember, the £2 billion we spend on asylum seekers' hotels alone every year is bigger than the second wave of levelling up funding for the entire UK. And shamefully, it's three times more than we spend on our own homeless, including at least 6,000 armed forces veterans. Britain is now a free travelodge for any economic immigrant, potential criminal or terrorist who makes it to our shores. Of course, the only place you'll never catch them are inside the homes of the politicians, the lobbies, charity workers, woke journalists, anti-racists, and the archbishops who all will this madness on. They are the no illegals in my backyard hypocrites, and they'll be sitting pretty in their piety as your community goes to the dogs. Well, to discuss this report, I'm joined now by its author and friend of the show, Dr. Rakib Ashan. Rakib, you must have expected a bit of pushback on this idea, but it's fair to say it's landed worse than a farce at a funeral. Well, I think that much of the reason why I received the pushback is that many people haven't thoroughly engaged with the report, uh, Martin. What I argue for in the report is a significant streamlining of the asylum system. I call for an annual cap on refugees, which is democratically determined by the UK Parliament. And under that cap, Martin, I'd like to see women and girls prioritised, especially those who have major risk of sexual violence in their homelands and insecure display displacement camps, which is a sharp contrast to the male-dominated, unauthorised migration that we're seeing on the English South Coast. Now, more generally, 
Uh, what I actually mentioned in the report as well is that we do have uh, people in relatively wealthy, privileged metropolitan suburbs with liberal views towards immigration, asylum and border security. Maybe they should put their money where their mouth is. So what we could do is have an expansion of the Ukraine style sponsorship model. And let's see, can all those people in those areas, are they personally willing to rehome newcomers and perhaps these pro-refugee advocates could also play a greater part in aiding the integration of refugees by improving their English language skills. Put your money where your mouth is. If you have liberal views towards these particular issues, then perhaps you should directly participate in such schemes. I, I certainly agree that uh, the Refugees Welcome Brigade should be doing more, but of course every time when they're asked, um, they don't want anybody in their backyard. It's a case of always passing the book. And isn't this the problem? Um, ideas like this are governments passing the book. Uh, they spectacularly fail to control our borders despite every single vote mm. since 2010, demanding they do so. And now they're outsourcing their incompetence to British households. It's just not the way to govern, surely. Well, I think that for some time we, we've had an utterly dysfunctional asylum system, Martin. Um, at the end of 2022, the asylum backlog was 166,261. It's quite a remarkable figure. And as you say, you mentioned some of those costs there that I mentioned now in my report uh, for Policy Exchange. Uh, the estimate one-year cost when it comes to spending on hotels accommodating migrants, $2.2 billion. And that, that, as you say, that's, that's larger than the entire pot of round two of the levelling up fund. And it's three and a half times larger than the UK government's budget to tackle homelessness in 2022-23. And I think that if this situation continues, it is unsustainable and it's a direct threat to social cohesion in some of the most underprivileged communities. And in my view, working class communities, they have done incredible work in terms of rehoming the world's most persecuted peoples. But I think their traditional generosity has been taken for granted. I absolutely agree. And I think also people are a little bit kind of put out about the idea that we should be comparing the plight of people leaving France, a safe country, no matter what you think about mm. Paris at the moment, um, to the plight of Ukrainians who are actually fleeing a genuine war zone. And Britain has been very welcoming. So don't you think it's, it's slightly wrong-headed to conflate the two entirely separate situations? No, absolutely. And I think that we've seen in recent times, um, especially in 2022, the most common nationality among small boats migrants uh, crossing into the UK via the English Channel was Albanian. Albania hasn't experienced conflict since its civil war all the way back to 1997. Uh, Martin, there's also a sharp jump um, in migrants coming from India, the world's largest democracy and a vital strategic partner for post-Brexit Britain. So I think that what it clearly shows is that the line between economic migrants and genuine refugees fleeing the direct risk of persecution and violence has become increasingly blurred and that has to change and it must be rectified. Okay, Rakib, at the top of the show, uh, we put this question out to GB News viewers. Would you be willing to take an asylum seeker into your spare room? You perhaps won't be too surprised to learn that the overwhelming majority of people said things that began with the word we can't say and ended with off. But we have got a few here uh, that we can read out. Um, Ralph Lane says perhaps the migrants could galvanise their own voluntary spirit, spirit by not coming here in the first place. It's a, dog, it's a dog's life, says. No chance, but there's plenty of room. Uh, in palaces, if they want to give it a try, David Reese also on Twitter says no. But I want to see how many placard waving, virtue signalling refugees welcome crowd do offer a place in their homes. Precious few is my prediction. Racky, there is one positive verse voice here. Andy Burge on Twitter, remember that name, says, I'm happy to do so. Racky, if Andy Burge is happy to do so, can we put him in touch with you so he can put his money where his mouth is? Well, I think that well, it seems like there's someone who, who wants to directly participate um, in, in the expansion of these sponsorship schemes. But I think, truthfully, what it really shows is that there are many people who have very liberal views, especially when it comes to refugee policy, but it's not their metropolitan suburbs and their leafly affluent neighbourhoods which experience large numbers of asylum seekers being relocated there. And all too often, it's... Uh, deprived inner city areas and left behind post-industrial towns across northern England that disproportionately bear the brunt of rehoming refugees and that really needs to change. 
Dr. Rakib Bashan, I totally agree with you. Thank you for coming on and facing some pretty robust questioning, facing the music, but that's the bravery of people like yourself. Thank you for coming on GB News today, the Lawrence Fox Show. Okay, you watch.